Thank you for joining me again, still on our series on VAR and three-way causality checks in STATA. On the screen is a three-variable VAR model I showed you in the previous video, PDI, PC, and GDP. And like I said, in a VAR system, all the variables are endogenous. There are no exogenous variables. And all the variables take the same number of lags. You can see K lags across all the variables in the system. This video will cover the actual way by which we can detect causality in the VAR framework. So this is the step-by-step -step procedure by which we can check for causality within the VAR framework. And because I've gone through almost everything here except step 5, so I will not be going through step 1, 2, 3, and 6. I will only focus on step 4 and step 5. So please, if you know you have not watched my video on VAR, estimation and discussion, VAR estimation and diagnostics, I will encourage you to please do so, so that we can all be on the same page in this tutorial. So having said all this, let us now go over to Stata to continue from where we start. So here's the data editor, from where you can see the variables we are using. These are the three variables that make up the VAR system. And I will always encourage every Stata user to have a log file. The log file makes your life simple. It's able to track what you've done and you can easily replicate your research. Okay, the do file is up and ready to run with all the codes in place. So we can see step one is done, I've specified the model. Step two, I need to run this command to prepare Stata to execute all my time series commands. So I've highlighted it, I click run. So this is the outcome from Stata. If you don't execute the tset command, Stata will not execute your time series syntax. Okay, step three, perform stationarity test. I'll skip this. Please watch my video on augmented Dikifula or any of my videos on VAR ARDL using Stata. The steps are very simple and my explanations are also very simple. Step four, determine optimal lag length for the model. Again, I'm going to skip this, so make sure you watch my video on how to determine optimal lags or any of my videos in VAR using Stata. So I'm going to begin today's video from step five, specify the unrestricted VAR model. The code is written out, you can see it here, and I'm using two lags based on the outcome of AIC. So I highlight all this and I run it. So here we have the outcome from the VAR execution. So this is the output from Stata. You can see it all here. And the way Stata arranges the table is that the outcome variable is indicated at the top left corner and all the other regressors are listed here. We can see the coefficients, the respective standard errors, disease statistics and the probability values. So we'll be basing all our inferences from the p-values to know whether that regressor is significant or not. So here we can see that the first lag of PCE is significant at the 1% level, and the second lag of PCE is significant at the 10% level. So we can easily see here that both lags of the PCE variable have causal effects on PDI. For the GDP variable, we can see that it has a significant effect at the 5% level on PDI. So we can also infer that GDP causes PDI. Let's look at the PCE equation. We can see here that the lagged regressors of the PDI variable have no effect on PCE. For GDP, at the 5% level, there is a significant causal effect from GDP to PCE. Now let's look at the GDP equation. We can see here that the first lag of PDI does not have any causal effect on GDP. However, the second lag of PDI has a significant causal effect on GDP at the 1% level. Let's look at the PC regressor. The first lag is significant at the 1% level, so it has a causal effect on GDP, while the second lag of PCE does not have any causal effect on GDP. So once again, you can infer causality from the outcome of the coefficients. These are short-run coefficients, so whatever interpretation you are going to give it, there will be short-run causal effects. So this is one of the ways by which we can check for causality within the VAR framework. 
The second way is by the Granger causality test, which shows us the direction of causality. So to do that, we go to statistics, we click on multivariate time series, we maneuver now to VAR diagnostics and test, then, then we click on Granger causality test. Granger causality dialog box opens up, and you can see here, use active VAR or SVAR results is indicated. What does that mean? It means the VAR Granger test will be executed on your most recent VAR results. So since I just recently executed one, so I'm going to leave this button the way it is. I'm not going to add any other thing. I'll just simply click OK. So here we have the outcome of the Granger causality wall test. And remember I said this gives you the direction of causality. And what will be your decision criteria? You reject the null hypothesis of no causality if the p-value is lower or equal to 0.05. So if the p-value is higher than 0.05, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no Granger causality. So let's interpret this table. This is a PDI equation and these are the regressors. So the excluded here is simply telling you that the null hypothesis is that PCE does not grandia cause PDI. And looking at the p-value, which is very significant at the 1% level, we are rejecting that null hypothesis. And we conclude that PCE grandia causes PDI. For GDP, we cannot reject that null hypothesis. However, when we combine both regressors together, this is what this all implies. It means the two variables grandia cause PDI. So that is how you interpret your Granger causality table. Let's look at the PC equation. From the p-value here, which is above 0.05, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that there is no causality from PDI to PCE. But when we are looking at GDP to PCE, we are rejecting that null hypothesis. So that is GDP Granger causes PCE. When we take the two variables together, both of them now Granger cause PCE. That is the all. Let's look at the GDP equation. PDI and PCE both Granger cause GDP. The p values are very significant at the 1% level. Same thing for the all here. So both variables have significant causal effects on GDP. So this is another way by which you can detect causality. Remember, the first way is by using the T statistics, which I just analyzed here on the regressors, and the Granger causality is the second way. Now, let's take a look at the third way by which we can detect causality. We go to statistics, we maneuver to post estimation, we go to test, and we select test linear hypothesis. So the test linear hypothesis dialog box opens up. Then you click on create. Now under test type, you open this and you select coefficient in specific equation as zero. Now you indicate which equation you are referring to. So now I want to test for the coefficients in the equation PDI. I click this and first I want to test for the PCE coefficients. So I indicate PCE, the two lags of the PCE. I click OK. You can see it below here. I've indicated the two lags of the PC regressor on the PDI equation. I click OK. So here we have the outcome of the world test. And we can see the chi-square result, 26.63, with the p-value significant at the 1% level. So how do you interpret this? This result tells you that PCE have causal effects on PDI. So that is the way you interpret this. So instead of going through the menu interface again, I will simply copy this and modify it in my do file to run every other test. So I'm copying this to my do file. I have them here already. It's the same thing. So let me just find a place to put it. So you can see it here. So all I need to do is to modify for the GDP and also modify for every other equation. Okay, so this is for the P. So this is for the GDP regressors on the PDI. So I'm going to highlight all this, I'll run, and I'll give you all the explanations. So from the world test, we can see here that we cannot reject the null hypothesis that GDP has no causal effect on PDI. Same thing for PDI on PCE. The world test indicates that these coefficients are equal to zero. 
So our conclusion is that PDI has no causal effect on PCE. However, GDP has causal effect on PCE, looking at the significant value of the chi-square statistic. Same thing, we can say that PDI causes GDP, looking at the significant value of the chi-square statistic. It's significant at the 1% level. Also, PCE causes GDP from the outcome of the world test. We can see that the chi-square value is significant at the 1% level. So this is the third way by which you can check for causality within the VAR framework. You can use the t-statistics of the regressors, you can use the outcome of the Granger world test, and you can use the world test itself. All these three tests can be used as robustness for one another. I have copied out all these results neatly in the PowerPoint slide, so let me show you what I have. Now, putting all the three checks together, you can see a clear pattern here. In conclusion, what do we see? We notice the unidirectional causality from PCE to PDI. You can see it yourself from this table. We also observe the unidirectional causality from PDI to GDP and a bidirectional causality from GDP to PCE and vice versa. So you can spice up your research or your writing with causality checks. It will give deeper insights into uh, the interactions of the model in your VAR system. So in conclusion, just to reiterate one more time, the t-statistics of the regressors will indicate short-run causal effects. The chi-square statistics from Granger and World will also indicate short-run causal effects. And each of these tests will always serve as robustness or evidence of validation for one another. You may be wondering, do I have to run all these tests all the time? Once you have your uh, VAR output, you can decide to run maybe just the Granger or the wall test to complement the results from the VAR output. So always try to include causality checks when you are running a VAR model. Again, if you need to read up on the VAR and causality checks, please, these references are very simple. Go through them download or read up several journal articles and see how they were able to analyze their results from causality checks. Thank you one more time. It's always a good moment teaching you guys. Thank you for encouraging me by your comments and by your likes. Thank you for sharing my videos. I appreciate you all. Please don't go away. I'll be right back.